you have a portfolio of legacy applications to modernize or to automate and deploy containers at scale in the cloud, when choosing a cloud partner to take this journey from monolithic to microservices, there are three key factors to be considered. Enable low-code development. It is the ability to leverage low-code development framework to rapidly create and host web applications. You need a platform that enables you to maximize the value of cloud-native developers by eliminating over 90% of manual coding. Innovate faster. Your ability to bring applications to the market faster is critical. You need a platform that enables cloud-native development at scale with best-in-class performance and security. Create an agile culture. Enable simplified application deployment and maintenance through built-in infrastructure automation. The platform should enable you to modernize DevOps practices to accelerate application delivery. Let's look at a quick demo on how Oracle's Gen2 Cloud infrastructure can help you transform your monolithic applications in the cloud. Today we're going to follow the journey of an IT organization as they transform a legacy monolithic application into a cloud-native, continuous integration, continuous delivery, microservice-based design paradigm. Our story is going to begin with the CTO. Like many CTOs out there, they often inherit applications when they lead an organization. These applications were sometimes built years ago, before the cloud was even thought of. The applications tend to be very large, very brittle, complex, and often expensive to manage. Today, we will follow our CTO as he aligns his IT department to modernize the company's product catalog before the upcoming buying season. To do this, he will transform a Java application that's been running for years into a microservice-based design paradigm. By leveraging the Oracle Cloud, he will provide the company a modern, scalable, cloud-based environment that is agile and ready for the future. To launch our modernization project, our CTO has asked his lead operations engineer to ensure that the hardware, the software, and the networking, as well as the security are in place for the project. With the Oracle Cloud, we provide the entire data center, and we do so with a 99.5% SLA. With the data center in place, operation engineers can immediately begin provisioning the services that their applications require in a matter of minutes. Let's take a look at how this works under the covers. Our operations engineer will begin the process of setting up the environment by creating a new compartment. This compartment will house securely all the elements uh, that need to go into the microservice build for the product catalog. Inside the compartment itself, once it's in place, he will use the built-in cloud shell to do things like generate keys. With the keys in hand, uh, he'll also need to go out to his identity in the cloud and create a public key for his API user. Once the keys are in place, he can begin provisioning various environments. We'll start today by provisioning two autonomous transaction processing databases. Each database will in the future house the backend data models uh, for the microservices that they support. Next, he can go out to uh, the Oracle Kubernetes engine uh, and create a new cluster uh, with the number of nodes that he requires. In this particular case, we'll use a node pool of one uh, to house uh, our, our two microservices. With ATP in place, we can now provision Visual Builder. This is our low-code environment that will be used by various developers later on. And last but not least, we'll leverage the Visual Builder Studio to house our continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. With our database up and running, our DBAs can now get started. Let's take a look at how Oracle's transaction processing database can make life easier in the cloud for DBAs. Our DBA can begin in the cloud by uploading a data pump export from their on-premise database. Here we can see our data pump file has already been uploaded to the cloud. Next, we can go out to and open up the SQL developer web environment from within our product catalog database. Here, we can begin to execute uh, any command that we normally would in SQL+. So let's go ahead and create a new user called Alpha1. 
with our user created, the next thing we'll need to do is create a credential to access our data pump file in object storage. With our credential created, we can now copy in a PLSQL script that will access the data pump file and load all the information. Once completed, we can execute a query to see the product catalog has made it in successfully. So to recap, Oracle's autonomous transaction processing database provides the world's only self-managing, self-securing, self-patching database, all with the familiar pluggable database design that you've been using as a DBA for years. Most importantly, the framework frees up DBAs to focus on the parts of the job they love the most, like data design and innovating with data to drive the business forward. With their data migrated to the cloud, our Java developers can now get started on the REST services. Let's take a look under the covers at how Oracle's Visual Builder Studio will enable a Java developer to both containerize and automate the deployment of a REST service in the cloud. Our Java developer will leverage the Visual Builder Studio to package up his code, containerize his code, and then set up a build to deploy his code to the Oracle Kubernetes engine. To begin this, we will first map the Visual Builder Studio uh, to the individual's OCI account that they will leverage uh, for the builds. With this in place, they can set up virtual machine templates. These templates will contain the various items that they need, like Docker, or kubectl, or the OCI command line for the builds that they'll construct a little bit later. At runtime, these virtual machine templates will execute on OCI to complete the developer's required task. With our high-level organization configured, we can now drill into and create a new project for our product catalog REST services. The product catalog REST services are contained in various Git repositories. With our code in place in the repository, we can now begin uh, constructing our builds. For this particular task, our Java developer will construct two builds. One build for our product catalog REST services, one build for our user catalog REST services. If we look into our product catalog build, and we go to the configure tab, we can see the exact Git repository that will be accessed. Then on commit, we can view the steps in the order that the build will take as it goes from code to container to the cloud. To illustrate this happening, let's go ahead and execute a build. When we click the Build Now button, the first thing that will occur is a connection back to OCI, where it will spawn a virtual machine with the template we created earlier to conduct the steps we outlined in our build. As the build runs, we can actually drill back in. We can see the execution. And at any point in time, we can monitor the log to see every step as it occurs in the process that we outlined. To recap, Oracle's Cloud Infrastructure Registry enables companies to securely manage, store, and control all aspects of containerized development. Oracle's Visual Builder Studio enables them as well to control all aspects of the agile development methodology. With our code ready to be deployed, our DevOps engineers can now take charge. As they work on the modernization effort, they need to ensure several things are in place. First and foremost, they must ensure that they have a robust but cost-effective solution for hosting containers. Second, they need to ensure whatever strategy or solution they choose in the cloud meets the organization's security, scalability, and geodiversity requirements. Let's take a look at some of the common tasks that a DevOps engineer would do as he monitors and analyzes the cluster. To do this, we'll open up our Cloud Shell, and we're going to run some very basic commands that are common to the Kubernetes engine. Now we can take a look at the pods. Here we can see our two pods. And please notice that our product service pod was deployed about 14 minutes ago when our Java developer executed his last build. What we're going to do now is simulate a pod failure. Let's say that something goes wrong and showcase the auto-recovery capability of Kubernetes in the cloud. 
To simulate the failure, we're going to actually delete intentionally the product pod. Now that our pod has been deleted, if we go back up and execute another get pods command, we will see in time that it auto recovers. Please notice that the product pod has now been up and running for 30 seconds. This showcases the built-in high availability features of the Oracle Kubernetes engine running in the Oracle Cloud. So to recap, the Oracle Containers Engine for Kubernetes, or OKE, provides predictable performance, simplified management, and lower costs for DevOps engineers to architect their future. With all of our REST services up and running in the cloud, our JavaScript developers can now get started on the front end. Our low-code developer will begin by creating new service connections. Service connections are simply ways to access information from REST services. In this example, we're going to issue a git command. We're going to connect out to the product catalog that's deployed on the cloud, and we're going to return many items. If we click Next and then go to our test tab, we can actually send a git request, receive the response, and save this response as an example that we'll leverage later. So I'll go ahead, in this case, and click Create. Once our service connections are in place, we can then begin uh, our lo true low-code development. Here we've imported a baseline application. The beauty of low-code development is that you can do the simple things very quick. For example, if we wanted to add a new image to the page, we could simply drag and drop it right here. Move over here to the general information or the data about it. Click right here and select the image that we would like to appear. It'll automatically upload it and place it on the page in real time. The same thing goes when we need to access information. Down here, we have a, a default grid row template or list view. What we're going to do now is show you how easy it is to connect to the REST service we just created earlier. To do this, we simply go out and create a new variable we're going to create the variable with the specific name, get products. We're going to say that this variable is going to pull information directly from a data service provider and click create. Here we see the data service provider is in place, but what we need to do now is select the endpoint. We'll go out to the service connections that we created earlier, and we're going to choose to get the list of items. Up here, we're going to choose to use the existing type that we saved earlier when we ran our test and specify Git products. We'll click Finish. And if we go back up to our view, we can now see that information about our product catalog is fully displayed on the page. Today, our JavaScript developer was able to leverage a low-code development framework to build a front end for a product catalog. Visual Builder Studio is based on standard libraries and technologies that are maintained by Oracle. It has fully embedded CI-CD to ensure multi-developer integration, and it's designed from the ground up to maximize the value in younger development talent with JavaScript skills. I hope this demo was very helpful to show how Oracle can help you migrate to the cloud quickly while maximizing the returns on your investment.